Your Excellency, Dr. Jakaya Kikwete, former president of the United Republic of Tanzania, Excellency, my sister Amira El Fadil, the Commissioner of Social Affairs of the African Union, Ms. Kate Campana, CEO of the Access Challenge, distinguished colleagues, I'm very pleased to share some reflections in this important discussion, and thank you very much, colleagues at the One by One Target 2030 campaign for inviting me. I'd like to start by appreciating the strong leadership of the African Union and the heads of state on the COVID-19 response through the continental strategy and all of government and all of society action in implementing public health and social measures. I'd also like to appreciate the contributions of African leaders towards attaining universal health coverage, including through the African Union commitment in February 2019 to improve financing for health. This commitment was reaffirmed with a political declaration on UHC at the UN General Assembly in September last year and heads of state support for the Global Action Plan on the SDG 3, whose implementation WHO coordinates. It's our firm belief that everyone should have access to quality health care without suffering financial hardships. The COVID-19 pandemic has once again highlighted that countries with less resilient health systems and the most vulnerable marginalized communities and households suffer more in terms of lives lost and economic impact due to outbreaks of infectious diseases. Building on investments from previous epidemics, African countries took early and decisive action with the support of WHO and our partners like the Africa CDC. Capacity is strengthened through Ebola preparedness, such as emergency operations centers, points of entry screening, and laboratories have quickly been adapted and repurposed to the COVID-19 response. By reinforcing public health and health systems capacities, along with physical distancing measures like stay-at-home orders and stopping mass gatherings, African countries have kept COVID-19 cases lower than in other parts of the world. Now, as countries ease restrictions, every community should have the public health capacities in place to prevent a big wave of cases. Health facilities should have the resources, including access to safe water and sanitation, to deal with COVID-19 cases while continuing to provide other essential services. We are seeing huge investments related to COVID-19. And this is creating several possibilities and opportunities to accelerate action towards achieving health for all. At WHO, we've been working with countries to spend more and spend smartly on health by investing in the most impactful interventions, improving efficiencies in the health sector and strengthening public financial management. Multisectoral planning and coordination is now ongoing in countries in response to COVID-19 under the leadership of heads of state. This needs to continue in order to advance broader discussions around financing and priority setting. Laboratory capacities have been strengthened and equipment from other disease programs has been repurposed to COVID-19. Going forward, we should look to shift away from disease-specific approaches towards more integrated laboratory systems in countries. Similarly, infection prevention and control is important in general healthcare settings. If we can regularly refresh the skills and knowledge built for COVID-19, provide the equipment and supplies, we have the potential to significantly reduce nosocomial infections in Africa. We're seeing countries like Ethiopia, Mauritania, and South Africa mobilize thousands of community health workers to support the COVID-19 response. How can we sustain and transition these investments to benefit other priorities? And then field hospitals have been set up quickly and buildings have been repurposed. We are also seeing home-based care for people with mild symptoms and new approaches in providing outreach care and delivering mass campaigns. The lessons from these experiences should inform the provision of services in future so that we can continue to expand access to integrated, people-centered care. 
This includes using technology in a range of ways, from telemedicine to professional development. For instance, more than 10,000 frontline health workers in Africa have joined virtual trainings led by WHO on intervention areas such as case management for COVID-19 and psychosocial care. We are also seeing the potential of social media and messaging platforms in sharing information with communities. We need to look at how to build on these and other efforts to engage communities, for instance, in seeking antenatal care, routine immunization, or antiretroviral therapy. A huge amount of data is being collected at present, and real-time surveillance platforms using geographic information systems technologies are being increasingly useful. We can make sure that data is collected, is managed in a timely way to guide decision-making and action for health provision more broadly. These and other innovations are key features in this response. At WHO, we provided seed funding to African innovators to develop mobile apps and low-cost personal protective equipment, for example. Together with governments and the private sector, there is an opportunity here to invest in the innovation ecosystem to reduce the time it takes to bring new ideas to scale. Further, in a context of disrupted global supply chains, local production has ramped up. This is an opportunity to strengthen local industries and routinely produce essential supplies domestically. We have seen that this is possible even in low-income settings. The pandemic is also highlighting the important role of the private sector in collective action to achieve UHC, and it provides an opportunity to build strong public-private partnerships for emergency preparedness, response, and other health service areas. Finally, this pandemic has shown beyond a doubt the importance of all of society approaches in health. In solidarity, governments, the private sector, communities and partners can shift from short-term investments towards sustained improvements in resilience and readiness capacities. In closing, it is very encouraging to see African leaders in both the private and public sector present here today, leading the way on UHC. I'm convinced that together we will overcome this pandemic and build back better to make health a reality for all people in Africa. I thank you very much.